What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirts, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Way Basketball Now says I'm going to check out the video. What's good, YouTube? Quinn Way Basketball Now says coming to y'all with another what to expect. We're going to talk about the New York Knicks. This is a team with a lot of hype around them. After they drafted Kevin Knox, who has been solid in summer league and looks very promising. Obviously, I did a rookie analysis breakdown on him. And a lot of people are looking forward to Kevin Knox lacing up those sneakers and showing what he has to show what he got. Also, another guy with a lot of hype, and I did a rookie analysis breakdown on him, is Mitchell Robertson, a guy that, you know, plays with a lot of heart, plays with a lot of hustle tries offensively tries defensively um and he looks very promising and young he looks like looks like a great project um especially since they drafted him so late and he basically one of the steals um other drafts so far based off summer league but we still got to see how he plays in the regular season and how he holds up in 82 games before we give him that not only that they have mario hazonia um, the 23-year-old from Orlando, they gave up on him. They thought he couldn't. He wasn't great. He couldn't be what they thought he wanted to be. He didn't put in. He didn't put in enough work. Um, he didn't really play amazing. He didn't really look like worth the money. So they gave him the, you know, the option, and then he ended up becoming for a free agent, and he signed with the Knicks for 6.5 million dollars. This is more of a rental. Let's try and see what he can do. Let's try and see how good he is. Um, let's get him inside our facility and see how he is as a person, see his work ethic, see how good and how much he wants to be great. And, you know, at the end of the day, Hazonia, is, he's a solid player. He's a guy that a lot of people was high on. That's why he went so high in the draft. But he still has a lot to prove. He still has to fight to stay in the NBA at this point. So a lot of teams will give him a flyer. Just because of his talent, just because of his size, and just because he can, you know, be, you know, potentially a star in the right team. And that's what the Knicks are doing, too. So, at the end of the day, we'll see how far Mario Hazonia um, development has and how he plays in New York really is going to be uh, how well his career will go. Because the, be the better he plays, the more somebody going to want to give him a long-term deal. The worse he plays, the the it is going to be hard for him to get opportunities to really get significant minutes. And if he does, he's going to come off the bench and not be a starter, which can hurt his career and eventually kick him out of the league. But right now, I think he's, he has a lot of potential still. And New York is a team right now that can give him a lot of minutes and really see what he can offer and bring to the table. And I like that. So I, he's a player to look out for, the most improved player. and He's a player to look out for. Um, to have a season that can help earn him some more money and some more long-term years. And his cancer has been so silly these last couple of years, obviously opting into his contract to collect his $18 million. He's a guy that a lot of people like. He hasn't really lived up to the hype. Um, he, he showed that he's a starting caliber center offensively. Defensively, he hasn't really made that much strides and improvement. But he can, he's very versatile. He's a great rebounder, a great offensive rebounder. He's a guy that can give you points very quickly um, if you don't pay attention to him. And he's a guy that comes off the bench and does give you a lot of fight, hustle, and energy. And he gives you a lot of offense. Obviously, Courtney Lee is almost out of New York, and they really want him gone because that's $12 million off their books. But he still has shown that he's a solid player. He hasn't been the player that we thought he would be when he first came to New York. But at the same time, at age 32, he's going to be a guy that's going to be filling out a lot of rosters as he gets older. I don't really see him getting that significant long-term deal. I can see him getting a lot of one-year, two-year deals. Um, then when he becomes a free agent um and then he, i think he'd be more of a journeyman more than he is now because he has found a home in new york 
they haven't got rid of him and they kept him for a couple of seasons. But once his contract is up, I can definitely see Courtney Lee bouncing around in the NBA. Emmanuel Moody is a guy that's 22 years old. Denver drafted him two years later. They gave up on him for Jamal Murray. That has to hurt. You would think that he would play with more fight, more focus. But he had a solid season in New York last year. He didn't do anything spectacular. He didn't show that he's... A uh, franchise player. He didn't show that he a uh, franchise point guard, or you know he wasn't dominant, um, and he didn't show significant improvement after going to New York. So he's a guy just like Mario Hazonia, where he has the age, where people are going to try him out, and people are going to try and see if he can, if they can fix him or help him get to where he wants to go, or just take a flyer on him just because he's young with talent. Um, I think he definitely, since Porzingis is out. He definitely need to take advantage of the opportunity of getting a lot of shots up, getting a lot of touches, um, and being able to hold the ball a little longer without bruising his and make decisions and show his playmaking ability. I think this is a make or break season, just like I said about Hazonia. Now that you're off your rookie contract, now that you're an unrestricted free agent, a lot of teams are going to pick you up just because you're a young talent. But after that, eventually them teams are going to get tired of trying you out tired of using you and then actually you know you'll be in and out of the league um and that's some of mario hazonia and emmanuel moody is, is that at their point of the career they don't have any long-term deals they they fighting basically to stay in the league and prove that they still are nba players but at as they are so young at 23 and 22 teams are going to continue to use them and try to play them joe kim knows the damn near on his way out um they're trying to stretch provision him and get him out of the um, New York Knicks. So they're going to take a loss on Joe Kim a contract. He hasn't been healthy. He hasn't been able to contribute. He hasn't really did anything for this Knicks team. Even when they had him healthy, he didn't really um, show that much promise because he was injured or he just didn't look good enough. He wasn't rebounding. He wasn't dominant. He just wasn't the same player that he was in Chicago. And now the Knicks are ready to move on from him and let another team utilize him. And basically they gave up on him, um, which they should because he just hasn't been able to stay healthy. He hasn't been able to live up to that contract. And he hasn't been able to play as well as he used to play in Chicago. And that was the reason why they signed him. But he never lived up to that going to New York. Frank Nina Kina is a 20-year-old. He's a guy that I feel like is going to be a starter on his team. The athleticism, the, the want to play defense, he fights, he hustles, he tries. He doesn't want to get embarrassed. He has the size, he has the length, he has the quickness. Um, at the end of the day, I think Frank Nina Kina can be a gem for them. That, Like I said, they ended up drafting. Phil Jackson ended up drafting it. Um, Chris Tapper, Zingas, and then he ended up drafting Frank Nina Kena, and then he got fired. I think those are going to be two building blocks of the foundation of his Knicks team, and I think that he's going to be a big part of their future. Um, obviously, Chris Tapper, Zingas coming back from an ACL injury. Only thing that's bad about it is now um, he has to come in and still show that he can play because he's going to be fighting for a contract, um, which I think the Knicks going to give it to him anyway just because he still is young. He still does have a lot of potential. He does have a lot of um abilities and he already has been an all-star at this point showing that he's one of the better players in the league and he still has room to grow since he is 23 years old and obviously you still have guys like lance thomas kadeem allen ron baker noah vonley young solid players that still fighting to make a name for themselves in the nba and get keep a roster spot in the nba so we'll definitely see how well these players play also trey burke Another guy with a chip on his shoulder um, came in the NBA with a lot of hype, with a lot of potential. Then he flopped, um, came back even better than ever for this Knicks team, playing valuable minutes, making meaningful shots and plays, and helping them win games. And now he gets a full season to utilize his, his new teammates and his old teammates and show that he can build upon the year that he had last year, and it was no fluke. If not, he's going to be fighting to be in and out of the league, just like the other players on this roster. Um, and Tim Hardaway Jr., a guy that, you know, they let go, then they end up signing back. He's going to be fighting for, you know, 
the ability to start and make a big difference. But this team has a lot of guys that's trying to prove themselves, a lot of guys that's fighting for us to stay in the NBA, fighting for relevancy, fighting um, to show that they can still play or they can still become superstars in the future. So basically this Knicks team didn't really have that many picks. Um, this team was just taking flyers on a bunch of young players that can be potential stars, and they basically trying them out and trying to find ways to use them and try and find ways to bring them into the stardom so that way they can pair down. But I mean, pair of Chris Stas Porzingis with another star, whether it's through the draft or even if it means trying out players. You trade a first or a second round pick for a guy that can be a potential star, um, like they did for Moody A, like they did obviously for other players on this roster just to take a flyer. So we we'll definitely see what this Knicks team does. Uh, without Porzingis, I don't really see them being that competitive. I don't really see them making the playoffs without Porzingis, but I do see this team being one of the teams that can still um, beat you out of nowhere. This is a team that you're going to have to come and bring your A game. They're not going to bow down. They're going to come out there and try to beat you, and it's going to be a team that you don't regret losing to as you come closer to the end of the playoffs. You're like, man, we should have beat that New York team. Man, they caught us off guard, or man, we really didn't take them serious enough. And I can see this team winning from 25 to 29 games like they did last year. It's just going to be so hard for them to win without their franchise guy and Porzingis. But the best part about it is they get to see what they really have on this roster. Where Porzingis going is going to give other guys opportunities to step up. It's going to give other guys opportunities to show what they can bring to the table and give other opportunities by giving them more shots. And that's going to show you that this player is this good, this player is not that good, this player has still not improved. And then you'll know if you want to get them a contract this free agency coming up. And then you can move on and try to find other talents to find. Uh, I mean, other talents to put around Chris Tasperzingas. I think this is just another rebuilding year, getting a top lottery pick, trying out the talent that they have on this roster and seeing if they can find another all-star or potential all-star in the NBA to pair with Porzingis in the future. So I don't really see this year being a competitive year. I'll see this as a year for them to make the playoffs. And I don't really see this year, you know, doing much more than just developing talent, seeing what you have on your roster and basically tanking to get a top five number, hopefully the number one pick, but at least a top five pick in this draft. And worst case scenario, they can try out some of this young talent and if they prove themselves, they can trade them away to get that star or they can trade them away to get that pick to give them another pick in the draft. So that way, you know, they can actually pair you know, two stars around Porzingis or at least find that one that they don't have to go with Porzingis. And I think that's all they really care about, finding another guy to go against Porzingis so they can build around them too that as a nucleus and make a run at the playoffs. But not only that, build for the future and hopefully become a championship team as this Knicks um, try to fight the Celtics, the Raptors, and obviously the Sixers um, for those that spot of dominant teams in the East. They show that they can compete. They show that they can be a solid team when Porzingis is healthy, but they also shown that they still need more help and they still need more talent. And now they're trying out a lot of new players to try to find out who is going to be the guy that can play with Porzingis. And they haven't found him yet, but this is a year that we get to see who can. Will it be Kevin Knox? Will it be Mitchell Robertson? Will it be Moutier? Will it even be Trey Burke? Would it even, you know, be Mario Hazonia? We don't really know, but all I can say is Kevin Knox and Mitchell Robinson, they look very good, and them getting more touches, them getting more minutes can really give them confidence, and it really shows potentials to be stars. And if you can find that other player in a draft to pair with Knox, to pair with Mitchell, and to pair with Porzingis, this could potentially be a quick rebuild for the New York Knicks. And you can see them back in the playoffs very quickly. But the fact that they're all under 25, this could be a team that could become a future 
championship team if they continue to play hard, continue to develop, and continue to play as a team and build that foundation to the point where they're a threat in the East. So let me know what you guys think. Is this team overrated, underrated? Do this team die because Porzingis isn't healthy, or do you think they're going to be better without Porzingis, or do you think they don't need Porzingis? Do you think that Porzingis is this team and they're not going to do anything without them, or do you think that you don't really care because if you don't have Porzingis, you get a top 10 draft pick, or do you think that this is just a good season to see what you have to build around Porzingis, like I just said, or do you feel like this is a year that Kevin Knox and Mitchell Robertson and other players can really put up some numbers and help their trade value, help their value in general, or even, you know, become more confident so when they play with Porzingis, they can really make a run at the playoffs next season when they have a full season of a healthy Porzingis and a little bit less rusty because he gets more chances to work on his body and work on his game in the off season and come back better than ever and more healthier than he will coming back at half of this season after he you know, comes back from the ACL injury, they're already going to be bad. They're already going to be terrible. So they might as well let them sit out the whole year so they can tank or, you know, bring them back and let them get some of that rust off and have a better year come in um, in 2019, 2020. So let me know what you guys think. Check out my website, analysisplayground.com. Link them in the description in the comment section below. Check out my Facebook, on uh, my website, analysisplayground.com. Link them in the description in the comment section below. Check out my spread shirt. Um, it'll be in the description in the comment section below. There you can find mugs, mouse pads, um, t-shirts, um, hoodies, sweaters, whatever you want. I got merchandise for you. And thanks for the support. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis, signing out. Thanks for liking the videos. Thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for buying the merchandise. I really do appreciate it that you guys are support, supporting the movement. And, you know, I need as much confidence and I need as much, you know, making you guys have something to watch and making you guys have something that you enjoy watching and being a part of, which is the community and this channel. And I really do appreciate the support. But also, you know, I won't continue support, so I got to continue to do my job so that way you can, guys can continue to be entertained and enjoy and so we can be on the same page. Thanks, and I'm going.